The Canary System, the diagnosis of dental caries, is presented by Kathy Tazewski, RDH. Hi, my name is Catherine Tazewski. I'm a dental hygienist in Toronto, Ontario. I've been a hygienist for 24 years. Now, I'll just talk to you a little bit about the technology of the Canary. The Canary uses two components to its technology, luminescence and photothermal radiometry. This is different than any other product out in the marketplace. It's a laser-based product that scans into the tooth. The laser is actually modulated so that the heat penetrates into the tooth. We have the ability to read five millimeters into the tooth structure. So between the luminescence and the photothermal radiometry, we then get a number to determine the health of the tooth. Most products that are on the market are measuring bacteria on the tooth surface. We are not that type of product. We are actually going into the tooth structure and measuring what the crystal structures are like. If you have decay or any kind of decalcification, you have breakdown of the crystal structure. When the crystal structure is broken down, the tooth holds onto the heat. That heat then sends back a measurement to the canary system. If you have a very good tooth structure, the heat can dissipate through the tooth and it has a very high luminescence. But when a tooth structure is unhealthy, it has a very low luminescence, it has a very high PTR. PTR stands for the photothermal radiometry and LUM stands for luminescence. So when we get a reading back, it will tell us the health of a tooth. We know based on the studies that have been done and all the technology that has gone into the canary, anything between 0 and 20 is a very healthy tooth structure. Between 20 and 70, we call it decay. We all know that decay ranges from decalcification right up to frank cavitation. Anything over 70, we know definitely is decay. The range between 20 and 70, that's where, depending on where you've taken your scan, how you determine how you will treat that tooth or how the dentist will treat that tooth. If you are getting a 20, 30, or 40 on a buccal surface, we know those areas are very easy to remineralize. So we can get somebody into a remineralization program and get them on the ClinPro 5000 toothpaste and get them on the, the Vanish Varnish as an application in office. We can then measure what is going on from one appointment to the next. So now what I'm going to do is show you the different ways that we use the canary in our practice. The first way is a quick scan, and you can see from the monitor, it just has one number on there. We don't need to have all the patient information. All we're going to do is just scan a spot, scan a spot, scan a spot, very quick. So what I'm going to do now on our patient, Doug, is I'm just going to go ahead and scan around some old restorations. Okay, Doug, I'll just get you to open up. And where I'm starting is on the 4-6. Doug has an old restoration down here. and there's a bit of gray shadowing around the tooth. So I'm just going to check around the margins of that tooth. So I'm just going to go ahead and scan. You'll hear a number and it'll also sh display it on the computer. 22. Okay. So we know we're still in around that healthy mark. Anything, you know, 20 and under is a very healthy tooth. So there's just starting to get some breakdown. At this point, on that tooth, I wouldn't do anything, but I'm going to check around the whole restoration, not just one spot. And this is how easy it actually is. You just scan around an old restoration. Very healthy. And I'm just going to keep going. And when I'm scanning, I'm pointing the laser onto the tooth structure, not the amalgam. Okay, so there you can see there's something going on on that. That was the distal lingual cusp. Okay, so for this tooth, on the distal lingual cusp, we're getting a 27. This is something that I would note in this chart. I don't think that tooth needs to be replaced at this point, and I'm sure the doctor will concur with me that we will just keep an eye on it. But we know we have a 27, so we're getting a little higher, but we can check that in six months at his next recall to see if there is any change in that number. The nice thing about the canary, too, is I can also check interproximal. 
And again, I'm doing the mesial of the four six. Very healthy. So now what I'm going to do is just do another tooth on the upper so that you can see how easy it is to use. So up here, I'm just going to do, Doug has a resin on the 2.6. He has an MO and a DO. And I'm just going to go right in between those two restorations to see if there's some breakdown in the margins. Very healthy. Okay, let's just go to another tooth. I'm now going to scan the 3-6. He has some gray shadowing on the 3-6. He has an occlusal amalgam, and on the distal lingual, there's a dark shadow on the tooth. So I just want to see if that shadowing is just some am amalgam leaching, or is it actually some decay? When I'm aiming the beam into the tooth, I just want to go into the area I don't want to be on the amalgam. I want to be on the tooth structure. Okay. And I'm just going to check around that whole area. Okay, so that's a perfect example of where we have some dark shadowing around an old restoration, but we're still getting very healthy numbers. So we know there's nothing wrong with that tooth. You know, before we would look at it and think, oh, there's some decay there, there's gray shadowing around that old restoration, but we know it's in very, very healthy, it's just discolored. So that's the one way that I would use it at the end of a recall appointment. I might just check a couple of old restorations, write down the teeth that I've checked, just jot down the number that I'm getting. And every time a patient comes in, I'll do a couple of teeth so that maybe over the next two years, I have scanned every single tooth. We just incorporate that as a five, like a two minutes at the end of a recall appointment. Very easy, very fast. Now I'll show you a detailed scan. And that's when we put in all the information on the patient and it is actually stored in the computer. What we just did now is a quick scan. None of the information is stored. It's just very fast. We just want to check fast around old restorations. If there's decay, we know that if there's a high number, then we can, the doctor can come in, verify what's going on around the tooth, go ahead and fill it. If there's no decay, we just monitor it and check it the next time if we're getting slightly higher numbers. When we want to do a detailed scan, we have to put in the patient's information, the patient's name, their age, male or female, and their postal code. That's all the information that you have to input into the computer. Then the computer holds that information so that each time the patient comes in, you'll actually see what you've done the last time. So if you're monitoring for decalcification, you have a baseline. And when you go back to that tooth and rescan it, the, the uh, computer will show you a small picture of the tooth that you scanned the last time with the numbers that you were getting. So you can compare the difference from the last scan to this scan, and I'll show you now. As you can see, there is an amalgam on the occlusal surface of this tooth. But on the distal lingual, right in through here, there's some very dark shadowing. So I'm going to scan that area right there to make sure, or to see whether it is decay or not. So I'm just going to bring the canary in onto that area. Put my beam straight into that area and scan. Fifty-two. Fifty-two. So there is definitely decay around that restoration. As you can see on the four six lingual, there is some gray shadowing down the lingual ridge. We're just going to go ahead and scan that area just to see if that is actually 
some amalgam tattooing or is that some decay? So I'm just going to go ahead and scan that area. And I just want to be perpendicular to that area. So we know being over 20, there is something going on around that tooth. This is a screen that would appear when we're doing a detailed scan. As you can see, it has your patient's name at the top. It's showing a full arch of teeth. And from here, you can decide which teeth you want to use. You can select all. You can select upper. You can select lower, anterior, posterior. Let's just go back here. The nice thing about this too, if I push the uh, pedal mode, I now have baby teeth. So if I'm scanning somebody who is, has mixed dentition, I can then tab on each tooth to bring out the adult teeth. So we can scan very young kids to very old adults. Young kids, it's great for working with young kids who can't have x-rays taken. It's also great for working with special needs patients who can, can't tolerate having x-rays taken. And it's also great for those patients who will not have x-rays taken. So the nice thing about this, let's just go back just to the adult mode. What we do when we are doing a detailed scan, we just tab the teeth that we want to use for our scan. So if I have somebody coming in because they have braces on and I want to scan their teeth. If it starts at the six, I'm just going to tab all the teeth. Okay, as you can see, I'm just going to finish off tabbing the last couple of teeth. And this would be somebody who is coming in for a full scan that has braces on. Once I agree to scan image, it'll start then going from the first quadrant, second quadrant, third quadrant and fourth quadrant and I will then at this point decide what surface of each tooth. So I will then scroll down to buckle or tab buckle and select. At this point is when I would take a picture of the tooth. It's ready, the camera uh, is ready to go. I would take a picture, the picture would register and then a grid would appear on the picture and then I would scan within the grid so that when I go back the next time, I can see exactly where I've scanned on each tooth. As you can see, we've, today we've done an overview of what the Canary system can do and the positive features that it brings to any practice. Using it in private practice is phenomenal because y the involvement that you get from the patients and the enthusiasm that you get from the patient is unbelievable. It's a great tool to implement minimally invasive dentistry. It's a great tool for finding early decay it's a great lead-in for any preventative practice. A lot of people think that this isn't being preventative because we're finding lots of areas of decay. But it is very minimally invasive dentistry. When we're finding things on teeth, we're finding them at the very earliest stages. So we can go in and repair areas where we don't have to take away a lot of good tooth structure. So this is very, very important in minimally invasive dentistry and preventive dentistry. So with the canary system, finding decay has never been easier.